am not a Warhammer 40k expert. Quite the opposite, actually. I've been looking for an avenue to dive into the series for quite some time now, and there's not exactly an agreed upon entry point for newcomers. Some will tell you to read the prequel novel series The Horus Heresy, some will tell you to hop between the pages on the wiki, picking up information as you go. Some will say to play the Dawn of War RTS, and others will tell you to read the flavor text that lines the pages of the tabletop rulebooks. If I may offer the perspective of a novice to this universe, I think an amazing place to start is Warhammer 40k Space Marine. Warhammer 40k Space Marine, developed by Relic Entertainment in 2011, is beautifully simple. Within minutes of the game starting, you'll be both blasting and carving your way through hordes of green orcs, which is a first impression that does not betray what the rest of the game has in store for you. No tacked on puzzles, no skill trees, no crafting. Space Marine is entirely focused on its ultra-violent blend of melee and ranged combat. And if there's one thing that I love, it's a game that knows exactly what it is. Space Marine drops you into the midst of an ongoing conflict where orcs have near taken over a planet and asks you to do what Space Marines do best, purge the planet of heretical Xeno's filth. Guns will blaze, blood will spill, and chainsaw swords will chainsaw. Regardless of the means, you are but an extension of the Emperor's hand, a tool meant to do his bidding, and that bidding is uncomplicated. Orc genocide. Your kill count will number in the thousands by the time the credits roll, so it's a good thing that the combat is just pure and simple fun. That simplicity extends beyond the gameplay and to the story as well. You won't come out of Space Marine having a complete understanding of all the different factions and rulers in this world, but where it's light on in-universe detail, it's heavy on theme. None of the factions represented in the game are what you would consider good guys. The main characters themselves are just soldiers fighting more so for the Emperor's order than they are the Emperor's justice. The ridiculous orcs with their hastily thrown together equipment and weapons that indiscriminately blow everything up would have been a good enough antithesis for order in most any other story. But what I've come to understand about 40k in the one game and one novel I've experienced so far is that it's a world where subtext sort of just becomes the text. Manifestations of chaos itself dethrone the villain role from the orcs in the game about 60% of the way through, and hilariously that's a late game antagonist shift that Space Marine shares with Horus Rising 2. Beyond that, parts of Space Marine feel like a cautionary tale warning against religious zealotry, and there's even a bit of a story set up regarding the concept of following the spirit of the law, not the letter. It doesn't really go anywhere with that thread, and that's a shame because I thought it was interesting, and it's far more controversial of an idea in this fictitious world where such texts are given near holy reverence. What you would conventionally consider a story here is sort of underdeveloped, as are the characters participating in it, main character Titus included. But Space Marine doesn't dive too far into that, so neither will I. The important part is that it conveys that this is not a world of good versus evil, but instead a world of order versus chaos, and it's through that idea that I feel like I have a much better lens to view this sci-fi world with. I think the way that Space Marine uses the fiction is tastefully done and isn't overwhelming to newcomers, and I can affirm that from a first-person perspective. But outside of that, I think it really helps that Space Marine also just kind of kicks ass. <laughs> If you played games in the Xbox 360, PS3 generation of console, you probably played something like Warhammer 40k Space Marine. It's a behind-the-back third-person shooter that brings you through a daisy chain of rooms filled with bad guys that need destroying, not unlike a Gears of War if you want a comparison point. Where I think it separates itself from many other third-person shooters at the time is the lack of a cover system, and more importantly, what it replaces that cover system with a huge emphasis on melee combat. Standing behind chest-high walls is often less effective than getting into the thick of things with either a sword, axe, or hammer respectively. 
there are no less than three buttons dedicated to melee here, with a light attack, stun, and execute respectively, that can be used on low health bows. That execute has the important attribute of giving you a burst of health upon completion of the animation, encouraging that melee emphasis to give you a second wind that you wouldn't otherwise get if you stayed away from the front lines. Your ranged weapons also pack a punch, and you can equip up to four at any given time. These run the gamut of fiction-appropriate pistols, rifles, shotguns, and the like, and they all feel incredibly chunky and satisfying when they're unloading their clips into orcish bows. The only time that Space Marines deviates from its shoot, melee, then walk to the next combat arena playstyle is when it mixes it up with a turret or jetpack setpiece style moment, which don't betray the carnage-fueled heart of this game. The Space Marines feel like angels of war descending down from the heavens to smite their foes. The three primary colors are fully represented on their armor by the end of a conflict, only two of which are because of paint. That raw, zealous fury that drives these Space Marines is what this title excels at making you feel, and it's why I actually started another run through the campaign immediately after finishing, just to get some more of that adrenaline pumping action. The few missteps that Space Marine makes is when it doesn't live up to that primal fueled slaughter that it is most of the time, and there's two ways that the game does this. The first is that it's far too quick to interrupt the gameplay with a cutscene to tell you something that could have easily just been mid-combat dialogue. There's only like 35 minutes of cutscenes here, which doesn't sound egregious for like a 6-7 to seven hour game, but I think it's how they're distributed. There's a bunch of micro cutscenes, for lack of a better word, that are just 30 seconds mid-mission, just telling you something about whatever the next control panel or maintenance tunnel or elevator switch you gotta go attend to is, and it will frequently stop you mid-combat to tell you that. They're just a bit disruptive, and it's double noticeable when those cutscenes are rarely communicating anything interesting, which is often the case. The second is that the introduction of the Armies of Chaos as your new primary rival makes a downturn in the overall gameplay feel. The Chaos Marines are not only extremely bullet spongy and able to take tons of punishment before they go down, but their tactics and placement are much different than that of the Orcs. The Chaos Marines will be posted up far away from multiple angles and be trying to snipe you down from afar, and while a minority of Orcs do that too, you still have the horde of simpletons charging at you that you could execute and thus regain health from. With such a large percentage of Chaos Marines posted in sniper areas out of reach of melee strikes, instead of out meeting you on the field, oft times my best plan was to match their energy and stand behind something and take pop shots with a sniper rifle. The irony is that combing through footage of the last third of the game made it look like it was more of a conventional cover shooter, albeit one without a dedicated cover button. The level and enemy design here in the final stretch doesn't gel as beautifully into the game's melee focused mechanics in the same way the early combat with the orcs does. And when I envision how kick-ass this game is in my head, it's the image of orc slaughter that fills my brain, not sniping Chaos Marines. Warhammer 40k Space Marine is fun. It's indulgent in its ridiculous ultra-violence that would be fun even independent of the brand. But the application of that brand is done just right, and as someone with a fledgling interest in it, I both understood everything that was going on, and it left me with a desire to seek out what's next, and what more could you want from an entry point into the series. I didn't feel that way about Horus Rising. I liked it, but it sort of went in one ear and out the other. Is that opinion sacrilege? Or heresy, if you prefer? I think I'll give it a reread once I develop a better understanding of some of the actual narrative of this world. For now, Space Marines earns the distinction of making me get 40k, or at least a small piece of it. Big combat astronauts in eternal conflict, order versus chaos, and typing out WA in all caps whenever you write about the game. I get it now, and where I think you can help me out is where the hell do I go next? <laughs>